Hello and welcome back to MLab 1231, Parasitology and Mycology. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster and this is going to be our second of three presentations on the class Trematoda. The first organism we're going to talk about is Fasciolopsis fusci. It is known as the large intestinal fluke and infection causes fasciolopiasis. It's distributed in regions of the Far East, such as China, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, and India, making it the most common intestinal fluke in Oriental countries. The size of the egg measures 150 by 90 microns. It is oval in shape and has a yellowish brown appearance. And you can see on the bottom left, image here. This is an image of Fasciolopsis fusci egg, 150 microns by 90 microns, oval in shape, and has a yellowish brown appearance. The adult fluke ranges from 20 to 75 by 8 to 20 millimeters, so 20 to 75 millimeters in length by 8 to 22 millimeters in width. And on the bottom right here is the first intermediate snail host, which kicks off the life cycle of Fasciolopsis fusci. So the life cycle. The life cycle begins when the unembryonated egg is released from the stool of the infected host. That egg then becomes embryonated in the water. Eggs then release the myricidia. The myricidia infects the snail intermediate host, seen in that last slide, the bottom right image. That myricidia infects the snail intermediate host, and then the snail myricidia develop through various stages, going through sporocysts, developing into radii, and then finally cercaria. That cercaria is then released from the snail and insists as a metacercaria on aquatic plants. Mammals then come along, such as humans, ingesting this metacercaria contaminated aquatic plants where it becomes infected. The metacercaria then exists in the duodenum and attached to the intestinal wall of its mammal host. That metacercaria then develops into an adult trematode where it begins to produce eggs and complete the life cycle. Symptoms of Fasciolopsis fusci include inflammation of the bowels, intestinal hemorrhaging, pain, nausea, intestinal obstruction, mucoid diarrhea, edema, and heavy infections can lead to death. Diagnosis of Fasciolopsis fusci can be done by recovery of the egg in the stool through concentration methods as the eggs are quite large. And differentiation from Fasciola hepatica is necessary as they are very similar in appearance. This can be done by going over travel history, clinical symptoms, or recovery of the adult worm. Our next organism is Fasciola hepatica, and it is known as the sheep liver fluke. It causes sheep liver rot and is distributed in areas common to sheep and cattle raising countries. It's rarely seen in the United States. This is as a result of the lack of the first snail intermediate host being endemic to the United States. Therefore, infections are not common here. The egg has a very similar size, shape, and appearance to that of Fasciolopsis fusci but the adult fluke is a little smaller, measuring 30 by 13 millimeters, seen in the middle image here. The life cycle of Fasciola hepatica begins when the immature egg is released from the biliary ducts and, or the stool of the infected host. Those eggs then mature and become embryonated in the water. After maturity, the egg releases the myricidia. That myricidia then infects the first snail intermediate host where it goes through the same process of developing sporocysts into radii and finally producing cercaria. 
that Circaria is released from the snail where it insists on aquatic vegetation as Metacircaria. Mammals come along ingesting the aquatic vegetation contaminated with the Metacircaria, one of the most common vegetation that are known to the harbor Metacircaria of Fasciola hepatica are watercress. That Metacircaria exists in the duodenum and migrates through the intestinal wall, the peritoneal cavity, and through the liver, parenchyma, and into the biliary ducts where they develop into mature trematodes. Those mature trematodes then begin to produce eggs and complete the life cycle. Maturation of the metastrocaria to the adult fluke takes about three to four months. Uh, the symptoms of fasciola hepatica can cause mechanical irritation in the intestines from its migratory pattern through the infected mammal. It can also cause obstruction of the intestine. Flukes in the bile ducts can cause portal cirrhosis. It can also cause bile obstruction, diarrhea, jaundice, anemia, puritis, urticaria, and cough. Diagnosis is again through recovery of the eggs in the stool and can be differentiated from Fasciolopsis buski by going over the patient's travel history and clinical symptoms, which can be a little bit different, or recovery of the adult worm, which is a little smaller for fasciola hepatica. Also important to note is the sometimes presence of eggs in stool and not being a true infection. This is known as false fasciolysis or pseudofasciolysis. And it is caused by ingested ingestion of infected livers with eggs. Uh, humans eating organ meats and livers containing the uh, fasciola egg. Uh, to distinguish this false fasciolysis from a true infection, antibody testing is necessary, or simply have the patient follow up with a liver-free diet, come back, collect a second stool sample, and that should allow enough time to clear the false infection. The next organism we're going to cover is Clinorchis sciensis. It is known as the Oriental or Chinese liver fluke and causes clinorchiasis. It's distributed in regions of the Far East but predominantly in southern China. Humans can become infected by eating undercooked fish containing the infective metacircaria, which would be a second intermediate host. The size of the egg measures 30 by 16 microns. It has a thickened rim around the operculum in the narrow end, seen in the bottom left-hand image here. There's a thickening and ha also has a comma-shaped knob on the apopercular end, which is this end. Here's a better image. So a thickening around the operculum end and a comma-shaped knob on the apopercular end. The adult fluke measures 10, by, 10 to 25 by 3 to 5 millimeters. So 10 to 25 millimeters in length by 3 to 5 millimeters in width. The life cycle of Clonorchis sciensis begins when the, the embryonated egg is released from the biliary ducts and into the stool. The egg is then ingested. The stool is then excreted from the infected host. Those eggs are then ingested by the intermediate host, the snail, and the Mericidia goes through the same process. Mericidia developed through various stages sporosis, radii, and into circaria. The circaria are released from the snail, and they then penetrate the flesh of freshwater fish. The circaria insists in the fish as metacircaria. The fish would be act as a second intermediate host. Humans then become infected 
by ingesting this undercooked, salted, or pickled smoked freshwater fish containing the metacercaria cysts. After ingestion, the metacercaria exists in the duodenum and ascend the biliary tract. Maturation from the metacercaria to the adult takes about one month, so infection and signs aren't going to be present until about one month after infection. Symptoms of Clonorchis sinensis infection can be asymptomatic with light infections or can cause jaundice from the bile duct obstruction, hepatic complications from chronic infection, hepatomegaly, which is enlargement of the liver, uh, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and anorexia. These symptoms are seen with heavier infection. Diagnosis can be achieved through recovery of the eggs and the feces or bile drainage. Those eggs are difficult to distinguish from heteromus metagonomus, but can be done through the thickening of the apopercular M and the comma-shaped knob on the apopercular M. That is going to cover the second part of our three-part presentation for class trematoda. We'll pick it back up with part three of three.